Hey there, I am Ray Troll. I'm sitting here in my house on top of a hill in Ketchikan, Alaska, and we're talking about the Cruising the Fossil Coastline exhibit, which is at the Burke Museum now, and going to be doing it with my good friend and collaborator, Dr. Kirk Johnson, who's out in DC. So this is the Washington State map that I produced in 2009 for the Cruising the Fossil Freeway exhibit that was at the Burke Museum. And Kirk and I wanted to produce some more content for the exhibit. And this was the first thing we needed to do. And lo and behold, it ended up kind of giving birth to a whole new book. We realized, wait a minute, there's new stuff here. So this is where Cruising the Fossil Coastline was born. And usually with my fossil maps, I like to have a lot of fun. You can find cheeseburgers in here and uh, little personal shout outs or a little uh, interest, but basically all the animals that you see here and the uh, and, and plants, I should say, to make Kirk happy, happy are located more or less where they are found. And uh, some cool things too, like I said, there's cheeseburgers in there. There's some, uh, kept, there's, a, there's a guy in Lederhosen up there in Leavenworth and, and over above Pullman, Washington, there's Galen Hansen. And uh, he's an uh, artist that I studied with. There is a cougar over there, but to balance that out, you can see that there's a dog uh, over above uh, Washington, uh, above Seattle. And of course I got a Sasquatch in there, the Stone Rose, Stonehenge, all kinds of cool stuff because I had lived in Seattle in the uh, 70s and early 80s. My kids live down there now, but Kirk grew up there. Yeah, the, the cool thing about Ray's maps are that everything you see in the map came from where you see it on that map. And unlike a lot of those maps, these things are real stories. It might be a, a fossil starfish out at Cape Alaba that was found by the National Park guys, never published, but there it is on Ray's map. Or you could find something like uh, Stone Rose Center in Republic, Washington, where the early Eocene fossil floras come from. And, you know, Washington is an amazing state because it has this incredibly rugged uh, mountainous coastline. And then you get into the big basalt plateaus of eastern Washington, where the great big floods came bursting across the state during the uh, end of the Ice Age. And there's just so many things to look at on that map. There's uh, all the incredible petrified trees in Vantage, Washington, where lava poured across forests and entombed trees that they became petrified and they can chip them out of the lava and, and break them free. And, I grew up in Bellevue, Washington, and as a kid, I could drive 15 minutes from my house and find amazing fossils. One of the first fossils I found was a dolphin vertebra in Issaquah. So it's a place where today you're up on land, but 15 million years ago, it was under the sea. And in Washington, it has this, this crazy collision-based history of geology where big chunks of land get slapped up against North America. So even in a place like Winthrop, which is in the mountain today, there are amazing marine fossils. And there are 100 million year old leaf fossils in Winthrop, and there's um, 15 million year old uh, rhinoceros fossils out on the basalt plains. You know, what's cool about the maps are you can collect all of the things that have ever been found in Washington and put them in one place for somebody to see. It's sort of like a, a little map museum. And, and one of my favorite fossils is the giant Jefferson's ground sloth, this grizzly bear-like sloth it was found when they were digging a foundation footing for a lighting fixture at SeaTac Airport back in 1964. And you know, you go to SeaTac, you never think that it was once the habitat of a giant ground sloth, but there you go. And Seattle, things like mammoths keep popping up. They recently found a giant fossil beaver on Protection Island out by Port Townsend. So fossils come and fossils go, but the map catches them all. It's like the great net of fossils in Washington State. So people have been out collecting fossil wood in eastern Washington for a long time. And back in the 30s, two couples were looking for fossil wood near Blue Lake on the face of a big basalt cliff. And the way you find the logs is you find these round holes in the basalt. And sometimes that's just where the log is. You peer into the log. But they found uh, holes that had no log in the hole. And they crawled into the hole. And they found some crumpled jawbones of an animal. They're like, what in the world is this? took it back to the museum, to the uh, university there in Ellensburg. And the guys in Ellensburg sent it down to Berkeley, California, where there were fossil mammal experts. And the fossil mammal experts said, hey, um, these are the jawbones of a rhinoceros, a fossil rhinoceros. And they crawled into the hole where the jawbone had come out and they realized that the hole was shaped like a rhinoceros. 
see where the head was. You can see where the front legs were. You can see where the hind legs were. And basically the hole they crawled in to get was more or less where the, the back end of the rhinoceros was located. So you had to crawl into this upside down rhinoceros from its back end into a cave. It was plenty big for a person to be inside. It was the amazing story of a rhinoceros that got overrun by a lava flow, got baked to death. Then the lava flow turned into a cliff and the cliff eroded, creating a hole where the rhino used to be. And then the two fossil wood hunters found that hole. So this story, the more I heard it, the more I thought, this is like, we gotta go to this place. Blue Lake Rhino, what do I know? <laughs> there, uh, I was uh, excited to finally get to go to see the Blue Lake Rhino, which is this fabulous cave uh, formed of uh, a poor rhinoceros that had a very bad day millions of years ago in Eastern Washington. Kirk had been going on about this site and actually the Burke has had some great displays on it, but Kirk, Kirk has been obsessed with this for many, many years. We've talked about this and we finally, I think it was in 2009, maybe 2008, we journeyed to Blue Lake in Eastern Washington and I will never forget that day. It was a beautiful, hot Eastern Washington summer day and rolling across Blue Lake, which was weirdly actually a very bright green from all the algae. But as we uh, rode across the lake, you can rent a, a rowboat there, row across the lake, and you go up this scree slope. And as we went up the scree slope, uh, I was uh, surprised after, oh, I don't know, we were up a few hundred feet and there was this angle and I looked down and suddenly, and I looked up and suddenly I could no longer move. Uh, I was frozen. So my little spidey senses completely freaked out. I'd forgotten about my fear of heights. And uh, it was all Kirk could do to really pry me off that rock. But I bravely rallied myself. And we thought we could find this thing pretty easily, but we got there and we couldn't find it. We were like looking around going, it's got to be somewhere. And someone had painted the letter R on the cliff, which is a clue. There's a letter R right on the cliff. So we looked up and there about nine feet up was this hole. And we're on, on this little ledge at the top of a big cliff. And there's another nine feet straight up. And I'm like, I don't really know if I want to go up that cliff. Because if you fall out of the hole, you fall off the whole cliff. And so we had um, Kathy Brown from Republic with us. And she just scrambled up the cliff and went right into the rhino and disappeared into the rhino. She was gone. And then she turned around and she was kind of laughing at us from the, the back end of the rhino. And I was like, oh, man, I did not come this far to not go into the back end of the rhino. And she came down and I climbed up the cliff and I crawled into the rhino and life is good, man. It was so cool to be inside the Blue Lake rhino. I was not able to do that. I, I kind of freaked out, but to compensate, after all that, we got down and uh, I wrote a song all about it. And I, in the song, I sound kind of brave and fun. And, uh, but we describe, <laughs> we describe, uh, what happened to this poor rhinoceros, oh, those millions of years ago. Blue Lake Rhino, hell if I know what has happened to you. Blue Lake Rhino, what do I know? Won't you give me a clue? What's become of you? Oh, my blue. So the old Burke Museum had an amazing glass case full of ammonites from Susha Island. And when I was a little kid, that was the most amazing thing to me. And I, you know, literally when I was probably eight, nine years old, I kept going back to this case and I was like, I gotta go to Susha Island, I gotta go to Susha Island. And just last week I found one of my old handwritten fossil labels that said Susha Island fossil 1973. So I went to Susha Island when I was 12 years old and um, found my first Susha Island fossils there because I was driven there by the the lust for ammonites that I acquired by going to the Burke Museum. And I don't remember, I must, one of our friends must have had a boat. You'd only get there by boat. So Susha Island is an extraordinary place. I finally was lucky enough to go there with Kirk uh, a few years ago, and actually it was one of the very last, it was the last trip that we took uh, for the Fossil Coastline book. And it was a beautiful sunny day in the winter, went there and uh, 
it's just so incredible this 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 chunk of the cretaceous the late cretaceous so everything that you see in uh, this north pacific uh, late cretaceous drawing are creatures that were found either in Sushu island or up in uh, british columbia in the same uh, equivalent uh, rock uh, layers so you'll see my beloved ratfish on the left and yes ratfish date back almost 300 million years in time there's a there's a mosasaur. Mosasaur chunks have been found up on uh, Vancouver Island. In, uh, up on Vancouver Island, there have been long neck plesiosaurs that have been found, even chunks of giant coelacanths. Kirk knows I have a real vertebrate bias. Uh, there are six gill sharks that have been found in these deposits. But then, of course, you got to admit that uh, the, the real spectacular, really spectacular stuff are the incredible ammonites and nautiloids that are found. And many of these ammonites are your kind of more traditional ammonites, which are your spiral shaped, but there are also these incredible uh, heteromorph uh, ammonites. I had a whole lot of fun doing this. And then of course, there was a certain bloat and float dinosaur that was found. And I will, I'll let Kirk tell you more about that. One of the things about Sushi Island is, is that Washington state has not that much Cretaceous rock or Jurassic rock or Triassic rock. And that's a time period of dinosaurs. And 2014, I went to the um, Burke Museum and gave a big public talk in Meany Hall about the geology of Washington. And I was taunting the geologist saying, Washington State does not have a dinosaur. You have Cretaceous rocks, but you have no dinosaur. So where's your dinosaur? And after the talk, Christian Sidor came up to me and said, you know what? We've got our dinosaur. And it turns out that Jim Gettert, who is a famous Washington State uh, paleontologist, had found a big bone embedded in the rocks at the beach at Susha Island. And it left it there because it looked too crummy. But he, uh, the second time he saw it, he realized he probably had to um, tell the Burke. And they went up and chipped it out. And it turned out to be the leg bone of Washington State's first dinosaur, which Christian Cedar and one of his students named Sushasaurus. And then of course, it's a dinosaur that was found with ammonites and other marine things. So it was a dinosaur carcass that had floated and bloated and got out to sea and sank to the bottom of a muddy seabed. And so just like the Blue Lake Rhino had this crazy story of a rhino getting caught in lava, here you've got a big dinosaur that dies and floats and bloats and sinks with the ammonites. So I pictured an upside down T-Rex sort of looking creature because we don't have the rest of the animal to really determine exactly what genus or species it is, but uh, an upside down T-Rex being nibbled on oh so delicately by the ammonites and the ratfish and the sharks. We do hope that when uh, the museum exhibit opens back up, you can bring the family. In the meantime, enjoy this video and uh, support your, your nonprofit museums and uh, support your artists and scientists as well. How's it going everyone? Hope you liked that video. If you did, throw a comment down below. We're gonna be holding a virtual event series with Cruising the Fossil Coastline. The first event is already live, so head on over to our website to register for that, and we hope to see you there. Bye.